Hi there everybody, uh, welcome back to Old Grill, where today we're talking about fitting a stove in a van or a horse box or any other vehicle which is fairly airtight. So, the things you want to really consider are one, bolting the stove down. You really want to make sure it's really secure. If you make a platform for it, then obviously you want to make sure you bolt it firmly to that. We've bolted right through the plinth stand, through the floor of the van, you know, with a nut on the bottom. So it's not going anywhere if the van was to be involved in a crunch. The other thing to think about is ventilation. Now we've made a 100mm vent hole there, put a vent cover over it, and that's to allow the, a supply of air to the stove. Obviously in a sealed van, you're in competition with the stove if you don't put some sort of ventilation in. And it's no good really just relying on opening a window. It's not good enough. You want to put a vent in and as close to the stove as possible. Obviously also in terms of shielding the combustible materials from the stove, there's certain distances that you need to comply to. You can either shield the wall or you can shield the stove. Uh, and then you can be a uh, closer distance to the side of the van. And obviously then there's the flue, uh, which you'll need obviously to run the stove. We've started in single here and gone into Trimwall and out through. Uh, and we've also done a video on how to fit the deck type flashing, which you obviously find next to this one. So we'll talk about all those things uh, and cover each one in turn. So as you can see we've bolted the stove right through the plinth stand and through the floor of the van itself. So when you're sighting your stove, really you want to get under the van and have a good look around first to make sure that when you do bolt it down, there's nothing that you're going to you know, foul when you drill through. You, you want to find a sort of an easier place that's got no sort of like conduits or exhaust pipes or electricals and that makes it a lot easier to bolt it down. And then obviously the same goes for installing the vent. We've cut a 100mm hole here and we're going to put this vent cover on the top of it and that's going to give a good adequate supply of air to the stove to allow good combustion. Now you could connect this up directly to the stove using direct air. In a van you don't really need to worry about getting the cold air mixing in the van because it's such a small space really that the stove will heat it comfortably even with the air coming into the space rather than directly into the stove. So after you've considered the ventilation and bolting it down you'll need to consider some sort of hearth. Now you could put down a piece that you mount the whole lot onto. It needs to be a minimum of 12 mil thick to comply with the regs although in a van there's a little bit more sort of flexibility on those. Uh, you'll need some sort of hearth in case anything falls out of the stove. So what I've got here is a little removable piece. It needs to be 225mm from the door forwards, that's the distance it needs to extend to. And I've done mine so I can take it in and out because I use my van for work as well as obviously a camper van. So I've got that there just to use when the stove is going. So you'll need some sort of hearth in front or underneath the stove itself. So you've sighted your stove, now if it's adjacent to combustible material such as plywood in this case, you'll need to either shield the wall uh, and in this case I've put up a enamel sign with an air gap behind it. You could use vermiculite board in a similar way, hardy backer board, or you can, we do a, an option where you can put shields on the side of the stove and this reduces the distance to combustibles to 150mm so you can have those added onto the stove or you can shield the wall but to sight it that close you will need to take some action if you don't take any then the stove has to be 400mm away from combustibles so obviously in a van where, where space is at a premium you want to reduce that as much as possible by incorporating a sign or shielding on the stove itself Okay, so obviously you're going to need a flue pipe uh, for your stove to work. So to fit that flue, ideally you'd have positioned the stove and then using a plumb line, i.e. A, a string with a weight on the end, you can denote the spot on the ceiling, which is the centre. If, it, if you, the weight sits in the centre of the flue, it will denote the whole centre on the ceiling. And once you've found that, you can cut out that hole in the roof as you see here in the headlining, I left a piece, a section, 
which I could remove to cut out the hole in the plywood piece. I cut the van piece out um, from the top. The piece of plywood needs to be cut about 50 mil away from the twin wall pipe. This is called a trim plate and it fits up onto the ceiling and hides that larger hole. We've used a section of twin wall to exit through the, the van roof itself and come down onto a half metre and a quarter metre of single which then goes down onto the stove. In a position when you've parked up and you're going to be there for a couple of weeks, you can add that extra length on the top of the flue if needs be to get a better draw. Obviously you can't use it when you're driving around because it will be sticking up too high. But if you're parked up for any length of time, adding a little bit of flue height will make a great improvement to the draw you get. So that's it. We basically support the flue with a wall band here which is mounted onto the side of the van. Again, everything's absolutely rock solid, which is what you want. You don't want any movement at all, because if it gets bumped or you hit the curb or anything, you could shake stuff loose. So, nicely supported, trim plate, flashing, bolted down, air vent, belt and braces, a carbon monoxide alarm, and a, well, this one here's a, a joint smoke and carbon monoxide alarm, and that gives you peace of mind. Uh, <clears throat> should something block the stove for example block the flue pipe that'll wake you up so think about all of those things bolting the stove down the ventilation supporting the flue the flashing the video you can um, have a look at that specifically for that job and like I say belt and braces get yourself an alarm and then you're good to go as long as it's not adjacent to anything combustible etc and you've shielded it well there's no reason why you shouldn't have any problem at all running your stove in a van. So there you have it, if you're thinking of installing a stove in a van or a horse box or any sort of vehicle, think about those few basic points to consider. It's not rocket science, but if you get those few basic points right, you should have no trouble at all. We're going to do a special on what you see here, so the pedestal stand, stove, heat shields, flue kit as you see it, uh, which includes the flashing and a closure cap and the rain cap. We're going to be doing that as a special, so check out the website uh, for more information and look forward to seeing you again soon.